Hey guys, so there's been a lot of discussion last few days about some uh, clone kits for the uh, Game Boy Advance, the IPS kits. Um, long story short, I do have one right here. Now this isn't a full kit, so I don't know specifically what they come with. They definitely don't come with one of these. Um, but most kits you get the adhesive here, uh, you get the actual ribbon cable itself and the LCD. Uh, I imagine they also come with a lens or so, uh, and I do actually have a lens that I can go ahead and use. Because um, I did buy a few extras when I was uh, doing, when I bought a bunch of funny playing stuff here. Uh, so, I even got a lens. Um, these kits in particular do use a slightly different lens compared to stock. If you look at a stock Game Boy, you can see... Now this isn't a stock Game Boy, but it uses a stock lens. You can see that the bezels are quite a bit thinner, or maybe not. I don't know how well you can see that. Let me turn this on so you can see. You can see how the bezel is a little bit wider there. And uh, well, it's lined up on this side, but it's wider on that side. Probably be easier to see if it was on that white screen instead. Yeah. So if it's lined up on the bottom, you can see it's a little bit wider on top. Uh, same thing on both the sides here, or on the top and the bottom. It's, it's just a bit wider. Uh, otherwise, it's basically the same thing as any other screen lens here. Uh, but this kit in particular, the reason I wanted to do this kit is because this is actually a different hardware variant than the versions that Funny Playing sells. So this kit, instead of using that itty bitty uh, MCU and then three level shifters or whatever the hell they are, uh, serial to analog converters or something, I don't know, uh, forgive me for not knowing the specifics. This just uses one big FPGA, and then there's this 8-pin EEPROM here uh, that is going to keep the brightness level so that when you reboot the console, it boots up on the same brightness, so on and so forth. Anyway, I happen to have one of these laying around from my other video where I uh, got all those junk kits, and uh, well, I wanted to see how it how it stacks up compared to the funny playing one. Uh, and so I managed to scrape up enough parts to make an actual kit and we'll go ahead and get that assembled. Uh, one other thing that this, well, you don't really need it, uh, but it certainly helps is if you have a bracket, that'll make it a lot easier to center this LCD within the, the uh, Game Boy itself. So that ends up just basically getting glued to the screen. Oops. And that way you can uh, locate the screen within the console's housing, make sure it's nice and center, and works pretty good. This is a 3D printed uh, bracket that I, I, well, I printed it myself, but I didn't make this. This is actually from Retro Modding. Uh, they posted the design file on Thingiverse. Uh, there's also this version from Jelly Belly Customs, but uh, this version is a little bit better because it does have this part up here. Uh, so when you shave your Game Boy away, if you accidentally shave away too much plastic, your uh, one of your shoulder buttons will lose the support that it needs. This bracket includes that support. Unfortunately, it's not really compatible with the V2 ribbons. It says it's only compatible with the V1. Um, but we'll, we'll try it out and see how it works if we can't modify it a little bit. And here is the donor console. I ordered this from J4U a while ago. It's KA8333 if you want to look and see how little I paid for it and uh, how awful shape it is. Um, but I have a feeling we're going to need to do a little bit of fixing to this console itself just before we can get everything set up. And if nothing else, I will need to pause. Sorry, let me stop talking while I'm taking that off. Uh, if nothing else, I will need to pause the video and give this thing a bath, because if it looks a little bit yellow, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely got some issues. Now, unfortunately, the clip on the battery cover is broken. I'm probably just going to do what I do with my other Game Boys and glue some magnets in here. Um, I do have an extra white battery cover, but my concern is this isn't the battery cover, but just as an example. This is white, but it's not exactly the same color. 
Uh, this thing has seen its fair share of wear, so. But I gotta see how it cleans up before I, before I continue, because underneath where there was a sticker, it is pretty white still. Or rather, I don't know, I don't know what was actually there. Oh! Dropping my screwdrivers. Because uh, on Japanese models, I don't think they have a sticker there, so I don't know why it's so much whiter. And that's what this is. Anyway, let's get this torn apart. I need, as soon as I can find it in here, a tri-point for these six screws. And normally I do a bunch of power testing uh, with this meter here. I'm not, before I actually take this apart, let's double check that it works. Uh, but I'm not gonna do a lot of testing in this video. I'm actually gonna make a separate video for that. And I'll put this kit head to head with the uh, funny playing one. So doesn't even boot up. That's probably not good. But it's also probably just the power switch. Usually is. There is a little bit of corrosion on the battery spring here, but nothing much. Nothing. I'm, nothing I'm really concerned about. Worst case scenario, I have a parts donor I can use. As far as cleaning these things up go, uh, I'm sure some of you are wondering. My process usually just strip out all the PCB um, and other metal bits and uh, warm water soap brush seems to work best. All right, I have five screws in my pile, but I took out six. Oh, there it is. Okay, and then the last screw is there's seven screws on here there's six tri-point screws around the periphery and then one jis screw in the battery compartment that'll just pop right off there I'll set that aside If there is a problem with this thing, I'm not going to go much further with this motherboard. We'll get another motherboard. So usually when there's an issue with the power switch, if you apply pressure to it, it'll work fine. So yeah, I just need to clean up the power switch on this thing. That's easy. I've done it before. It's usually the issue. I've just never had one bad enough that it won't even boot. right once you've got that out there are between two and three more JIS screws on the PCB one on the left here and sorry I'm just clearing space up here for my screws and then either one or two over here this one happens to have two Once you've got those three out, just lift the bale up that way, and this ribbon cable will uh, usually doesn't come out, but the easiest way to get it out is to uh, hinge the motherboard out, and once you've got that bale loosened, you can just pull straight on it, and it'll come out. We'll set this aside here. Uh, there are a few quick little things I want to do to this, but I'll do it off camera. Uh, I just want to clean up the dust. Uh, clean up the button cut. Well, this one's actually pretty clean except for around the start and select. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and clean up the power switch because it's kind of gross. Or at least it's not working the way I'd like it to. Uh, but I'll, I'll do that off camera. This video is otherwise going to get too long. Uh, pull out the button contacts. Like usual, when installing a mod kit like this, you've already got the console torn down. Might as well uh, excuse me. Uh, might as well take a few minutes and get the, uh, you know, clean up the shell. 
All right, so last but not least, we have the screen. I'm going to uh, take this LED light pipe, set it aside before I lose it. To get this screen out, usually easiest, just give the shell a bit of a twist. And uh, pry up the corner from there. Now this new screen does come with its own adhesive, so I'm not going to reuse this one. Uh, I'm just going to keep it on the screen and save it for something else if I'm restoring another Game Boy down the line or something. I don't know. I don't know yet, but since we don't need it, I'm not too concerned. We'll go ahead and set this aside. This screen itself actually does have a little bit of polarizer damage. I don't know how, how well it's coming out on camera, but there's these marks dead center of the screen. It looks like, uh, I don't know, it, it looks kind of like it's burnt. Um, a more extreme example of that is this Game Boy Pocket I have here. Uh, obviously this thing's not nearly that bad, but it's the exact same issue. And the fix itself is even the same. You just got to peel off this uh, front polarizer layer and then lay a new one on. But in this particular case, we don't really give a darn because we're replacing the whole screen. So set this aside, toss it, do whatever the hell you want. This is the part we need to uh, focus on. So to get the new screen in here, I'm going to, uh, I'm actually gonna grab one of my broken screens here that I don't really care if I mess up because it's already broken. So this goes on like this. And I think there's some adhesive on there, so that should stay nice. And this bracket is actually going to line the screen up right here. So we need to cut away some plastic. And let me grab a Sharpie. So I can draw what we're going to cut away. So as you can see, it fits nicely on this left hand side here, it's this right hand side that we need to be concerned with. So I'm going to mark off and for this particular part, this is the part that I don't want to cut. You don't want to cut this whole thing away because that is, uh, that's actually what this bracket is designed for. You see it has this little part that sticks out. That is what the uh, shoulder button, this little spring rests on to give your shoulder button that spring. If you cut that out, you're, I mean, it'll still work fine. It just, it'll feel kind of gross and mushy, uh, but we'll come back to that. So that's the part I want to save. And otherwise we need to cut out, I really shouldn't use, well, too late for that, a Sharpie. Uh, otherwise we need to shave this part flat same thing for if you're doing an AGS-101 mod, all this stuff, except you got to leave this bottom part, or you can leave, uh, but otherwise you want to cut off this whole wall all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, even through the start select button area. Whole thing. It needs to go all the way down to right here. that whole thing away. So when these, uh, when the funny playing kits themselves first started shipping, uh, they didn't actually ship with a bracket. I think that was retro modding that started shipping them with brackets, but they did ship with these off center screen lenses so that you just put your screen in off center without having to trim all this nonsense away. Cause the LCD itself without the bracket does fit in this cutout. Uh, no cutting required. The only problem is the image itself is off-center because there's all this extra nonsense at the bottom that you have to make room for. Um, so I'm not too concerned about ruining this screen. I'm just using it as a, a, a dummy, really, for test fitting, making sure that all my trimming is fine. Uh, this screen is already broken. The ribbon cable is... I'll just finish that off. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just use this for test fitting here so we can see how much more I need to trim. Uh, but otherwise, I'm actually going to bring this over to the Dremel and get this trimmed up. And then once I get it trimmed up on the Dremel, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video for a while because uh, I, I need to clean this thing. It's gross. Um, but I'm just going to do that warm water soap. Same as usual. But otherwise, we just need to trim that flat and cut away that wall. And I will be back in just a second. Okay, so hopefully I don't drop my phone. I just kind of have it balanced in the stand and angled up. Uh, anyway, I'm at my uh, cutting station here. It's literally just a uh, rotary tool in a drill press stand. Um, and on it, I've got a uh, flat end milling bit. And I'm just going to stick that in here to, to get this cut. Uh, there is something that I completely forgot to mention before I uh, walked over here, and it's that we also want to... I'm going to pop this lens out. It's actually not in too bad shape, so I'll save it for another Game Boy or something. Uh, anyway, I do want to try and enlarge this opening for the new lens here. Because uh, as you can see... We got that centered in there. You can uh, the edges just barely line up on the left and right side, but I think I'll open them up anyway, just a little bit. And along the top, actually, it looks fine, but I might open that up just a little bit anyway too. But the bottom definitely needs to open up some. Uh, so on the bottom, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw here. this plastic off. You can see I'm going to take off about that much. Let's mark it on this side too. I'm going to try and do this in the in the Dremel or the rotary tool stand here, but I'm probably going to mess it up. So Just using this LCD as a straight edge. There we go. And just marking some off on the sides here. ain't perfect, but it doesn't have to be because the lens should cover everything. There we go. So that's about what I came up with, but we'll, we'll do that part second. First, I'm going to go ahead and cut this edge here. And, uh, well, headphone users, you have been warned. buy a new bit that will hopefully not have that happen but it's not here yet of course it just melts and gets stuck to the tip Not having a good time with this. Oh, never mind, it was working fine. Usually I can get a lot further without this happening. You know what? I think this 
actually works better if I have a smaller bit on the end here. So right now I've got this huge, I think it's actually the biggest bit I have. I think it works a lot better with a smaller bit. So I'm going to pop that in there. I'll use that instead. Work even better if I had a uh, two flute bit, but these are. Oh, these are two flutes. Hmm. I don't know. It'd be better if I could even further lower the RPM. the video for a bit while I get this sorted because this is going to take forever if I have to pause every few seconds. The bit isn't even locked in as tight as it should be. I'm sure that doesn't help. Yeah, hang on, I'm going to go grab some tools or something. I used to be a lot better at this. I don't know what changed. great until it doesn't. is as soon as it starts sticking to the tip instead of cutting smoothly like it's doing over here it starts just like swirling the plastic around like this mess 
So, if anyone has any recommendations, if I'm doing something that's, like, just terrible, I'd love to be able to do this without having to stop every ten seconds. <laughs> time it happened right away. It's the speed at which I cut, you know, moving too slow or something. Oh, I forgot to cut a little bit up, up on the top. I just realized this LCD is in this bracket upside down. Whoops. Oh wait, no it's not. What the hell's that then? It just barely doesn't fit. And that might be so I've just got plastic shavings to remove. It's 
Still gotta clear that stuff out of the start select button area. The plastic that I cut off, I mean. There we go. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. There we go. Now it seems to fit. Cool. So next, I'm going to try and cut this area. I have a feeling it's going to be a total disaster. But it should be okay as long as I don't go too deep because it's going to be covered by the mask. I'm going to go ahead and get the rear shell so that it's not weeble wobbling on me. Alright. As long as I don't cut too deep, we should be good to go. I shouldn't even have to change the height once it's set. significantly better than I expected it would. I expected that to be a complete disaster. Okay, let me do the other three sides. under there while it was on. It was so dumb. Uh, the shell got caught on this tape here and actually ruined one of my cuts. I'm gonna peel this tape off. I had this tape down to protect some of the more delicate shells that I've cut, like the painted ones. We'll have to, it's getting, I mean, look, I, I burned this piece of tape over here. So I guess it needs replacement. You can even get it off, there we go.
right, so cut outside the line just a little bit, but I think it should be fine because all these cuts are going to be under the lens anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up, and I will be back in, well, for you guys, just a second. All right, so several hours later, and uh, I think this is finally dry. Uh, I'm not going to be using the rear half of the shell just yet because I do want to try and fix that battery compartment. So I'm going to add some magnets like I did to my other consoles. Um, and also I washed it last and it's actually still wet. Uh, I did start cleaning everything up. Unfortunately, it looks like the D or the AB button ribbon was bro or membrane was broken. So that's garbage. And the start select membrane didn't exactly clean up the way I was hoping it would. Uh, I have no idea how to clean this up. I think it kind of gross. I think that's just like years of finger oils or something. I don't know. Or maybe from whatever made this shell yellow. I don't know. Either way, not going to be using that, uh, which is actually convenient because I decided I was thinking of using some different buttons. I actually rather like that blue on white look. Uh, only problem is the start buttons that I have that are in blue aren't exactly the same color. I'm not sure if I like that. I'll probably end up doing that anyway. That or I have this uh, dark brown-ish color. Actually, that looks black. Never mind. Uh, I'll just use the black ones. Whatever. No big deal. Uh, but take those out for now. Let's get back to this. So before we go any further, I want to actually check and make sure that my cutouts for the... Uh, extra large lens are correct. And so the way to check that before getting everything together is you can peel off the uh, inside of this, uh, I don't know, paper here. Helps if you get both layers. And you just want to do the inside bit, not the, not the surrounding. But if you put that on, you should not be able to see any bezel. And I do not see any bezel. So I think we did good. It's a little bit on here on that side, but uh, only if you look at an angle. So I think we'll be good. Another thing you can do, and I... I'm going to set this aside so I don't get it all gross. Actual paint is probably a better idea. But if you take Sharpie, and this is, oops, shit, I'm going to have to clean that up now. Uh, this is probably only really necessary for lighter colored shells like white. Uh, if you're doing black shell, obviously this is going to do nothing. But I figure if you black out the bezel, you'll be able to see it very well. When it's all put together. I did actually end up sanding this down a little bit just to kind of clean up my rough cuts. Oops, I gotta clean that up too. I just took 220 grit and wet sanded it while I had it, while I was cleaning it. You can see a few spots where I really gouged it with the tool. It's not covering with the sharp. No, you can't see because uh, angles. Sorry. I could see. Whoops. Now, obviously, I'm not really concerned about that, but I do got to clean that up. So if we take this and set it down again. Now when you look at it from the side, you can hardly see the bezel, it's just black. 
I think that will end up looking pretty sharp. But because I am a dunderhead, I gotta clean up that sharpie. Uh, don't worry, we're almost done. The hard bits are over. I'm just gonna use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. That'll take the sharpie right off. And use the other side to soak up that extra IPA. right here too. And the rest of this, I don't give a darn about. I'll clean that later. Okay. So next, we're going to go ahead and install the adhesive here. The easiest way to do this is not the way I did it last time, but if you just peel off the uh, big side. And of course, the little side is coming off easier for me today. Okay, there we go. And line this up on the bottom. I have a Siamese cat, by the way. If you can hear. Got that, and then you can just push that through. And I've got the adhesive all taken care of. You want to make sure that if you're trimming your bezel, you got to make sure you do it perfectly before you get the screen in there, because once you get the screen in, it's not coming out intact. Also, if you do use this adhesive, make sure that it is pressed firmly down on all sides because this acts as a dust seal as well. So now, let's go ahead and get this to get... Oh, before we get this in here, I need my bracket from my uh, test here. My test fitting lens, or screen, whatever you want to call it. All right, and we're going to stick this down to the LCD here with some of my 300 LSE tape. There's the end. This double-sided tape is completely overkill for this application, but it's what I have, so that's what I'm using. This is stupid sticky stuff. Um, it's used for like attaching a tablet screen to the body of the tablet. It's also not the right width, but that's okay. So if you order one of these kits through, f not funny playing, uh, retro modding, I believe it comes with one of these brackets and it already has the tape applied to it. This goes like that. And ta-da! So now we're going to get this screen stuck in here. We're going to commit to this kind of gross, dirty white shell. Dirty as in like off-white, not dirty as in, I swear I didn't just spend the last hour cleaning it dirty. And that was in there, just like that. Hopefully I didn't just ruin it, because I did not put it in straight. If I did, this video is going to be cut short. Looks good though. Good lord, it's like screaming bloody murder. I 
think that's going to be fine. Now the worst part is that a little bit of dust just fell on the screen. And as soon as I put the lens on, it's not coming off. But I'm just going to accept it for all its imperfections. going to be okay. It's all going to work out. You'll see. Boom. All right. Let's get this thing together. Oh, I think we got to put the ribbon in before I can put in the start and select. Oh, shit. So make sure that this ribbon is actually bent up on the other side of that. There we go. Really hope it didn't ruin the screen. I was sloppy. Okay. That is in there. I think we're good to go. in there. Put the original D-pad membrane in there. Don't forget your light pipe. I need to add a wire for my brightness control, but before I do everything, I'm going to double check that I didn't just destroy my screen, because it's going to be a bummer, isn't it? Okay. it th this was just at two and a half volts. How is it at five? Good enough. I also did go ahead and clean up the power switch while I was waiting for everything to dry. Oh, good. I didn't. I didn't break it. That's ah, okay. I feel so much better now. I spoiled the surprise, but it's okay. Now I know the surprise is a good one. Wire. You can wire it to either start or select, or any button really. Typically start or select is a good choice though. I'm using 30 gauge Kynar, and as you can see from the test that I just did, it is not necessary. Not necess you don't have to wire it up if you don't want to. No soldering required. But I want to wire it up, so I'm going to. There we go. Clean up all that flux because I'm worried about accidentally pulling that pad off if I'm not paying attention. 
So, I'm going to stick that down with a little bit of Kapton. Otherwise, that'll wrap up. Or actually, I'm going to wrap that on the other side here. And right there about is good enough. And I'm actually going to use red wire, the other two buttons. And I'm going to wire them from this side. Now, only because I just had my other one open do I know that this side of the button is the side I probably want to solder to. And then that wire needs to be about that long. But I can't remember if the other side is the same way. So I'll double check here. This one right here, that should be grounded. Indeed it is. That should not be grounded. Indeed it isn't. And then I think it's just left and left. Yeah. Oops, knocking shit around. I like to solder to the legs of the button itself just because there's no risk of accidentally tugging too hard and pulling the pad off. As opposed to soldering to the test pad itself. On the other side of the board. Do you got to be careful soldering on this side of the board though because the wire routing itself is a little bit more difficult. It's a lot easier to route yourself into a corner. All right. Oh, in this case, I don't think that wire is actually long enough. So we're not going to route it on this side. I'm going to do it on this side. Yeah, I have that right. Okay. So that's the select. I should probably do this one last. Now, in this case, my ribbon is already tinned because I was just testing something for another video that I will probably upload simultaneously. But otherwise, you'll have to tin it yourself. All right. And it always throws me off upside down. I gotta flip it around. So that's L. This is L. Backwards. That one goes here. And this one goes there. Sorry, I know my hand's in the way for that. Okay. All done with that. Let's get one more piece of Captain. And otherwise, we're good to solder the earth to assemble this. You do not have to insulate this. The captain is just to make this a little bit more um, accident proof. So I don't, like if I'm rushing to take this apart for something, like, you know, I decide I really hate the blue buttons or something, then this is going to slow me down so I don't rip any traces. Otherwise, 
think we're good to go. Okay, that's seated. Let's get some screws in here. That is not the right screwdriver. Neither is that. All right, so my camera's probably gonna cut out in just a second here. Uh, if it does, I'm not gonna pick up exactly where I leave off. This thing is probably going to be completely assembled. But, uh, I'll just keep going until it cuts off. So from here on out, it's pretty much just typical Game Boy Advance assembly. Instead of this blue power switch, I'm going to use the original black one. Also, like I said, since I'm not using the white back, I'm going to use this one for now. I'll assemble it with the correct bits when, uh, when I get them fixed. Problem is I lost my game, but uh, there we go. Let's try out flash cart here. This thing came out way better than I expected. Except I don't have any start or select buttons, so that's cool. I don't think this membrane works. I'm gonna have to tear it apart. <laughs> Oopsie doodle. Okay. Um, I guess let's just do blazing emerald or not because it's not in there. Hmm. I don't know. I guess I'm gonna figure out why my start and select aren't working, and I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, so I've been in and out of this thing a couple times, and I did finally figure out the issue. Um, it wasn't anything I did wrong. It's just the RNG gods decided to smite me today. This is the membrane that I was using. Uh, it's probably hard to, t hard to see it. I don't know if the lighting is good enough here. Uh, but if you look at the bottom here, if you look at the one on the left... You can see there's this little textured black pad here. That's a conduct. That's the conductive part that makes the membrane work. This membrane doesn't have that on either start or select. I don't know how that happens. Um, I thought this was an OEM membrane. I mean, obviously it's not OEM colored. I dyed this, but I don't know. I guess it wasn't OEM and. Yeah, I, I genuinely don't know how that happened. Um, anyway, 
got a new membrane in there. Uh, I didn't use this one because I had it together and it wasn't, I don't know, it felt kind of mushy. I didn't really like how it felt. So I took it apart, put this one in here. It's purple. Uh, it's not OEM. It's not the same color as stock. It's a little bit darker, but it's, it's not exactly the color I want, but it's what I have, so it's what I'm going to use. Anyway, fire it up. I did find my game, by the way. It was just in my other Game Boy. But we'll go ahead and boot this up here. And actually kill these lights, too. You can see how the screen looks a little bit better. Bring it in a little. See, I have a start button. Uh -huh. run indoors but yeah working B button so take a look at that I don't see any frame dropping any tearing oh actually I did just see a frame here and there it's kind of hard to tell this isn't exactly yeah it is dropping frames interesting okay so that is one thing that the funny playing ribbon definitely does better than this one but I mean, it is what it is. Um, and here's how the brightness control works. You notice it goes stupid low. Uh, you can probably see that on video, but it's very hard to see in person. I suppose if I literally killed every other light in here until it was pitch black, I'd be able to see that a little bit better, but it's not great. Anyway, bring that all the way up to max brightness. It doesn't look like it gets as bright as the other kit, but it's hard to tell. I'm going to go ahead and put those two side by side and we'll really see there. But it looks pretty decent, alright? I see no major issues other than that occasional frame dropping. Um, and now that I know what to look for, of course, I'm seeing it all the time. It doesn't seem to be nearly as frequent as like the all-in-one kits for Game Boy and Game Boy Color, but I don't know. It is there. But I suppose that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video was just to get it installed. And I think I've done that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue cleaning up the shell that I started cleaning up so I can put the white back on this. You know, actually, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of digging this so far. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Um, I'm leaning towards the white rear housing. Of course, I still got to get the uh, battery cover fixed, but that's... That's a different topic. Uh, anyway, I'm pretty happy with that. There were a few close calls here and there, but otherwise I think it came out really nice. Um, if y'all have any questions or if you want me to try anything out, please let me know. I am working on another video side by side as, you know, side by side this one, uh, where I'm comparing it to the uh, funny playing ribbon that I did in this Game Boy. Um, so, yeah, if you have any questions specifically about the ribbon, direct them to that video. If you have any questions about the install, um, well, you're in the right probably read the heba. You're in the right place. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Have an excellent evening.